Now let's work through a few examples of limits where x approaches a number. In all cases, we should begin by simply substituting the number in. If the function is continuous, we're just going to get a value and that'll be our answer. So let's start with number 1 here. We're just going to fill in the 3 that we're approaching. And we've got is 3 plus 1 squared, which is 4 squared or 16. Very easy, very straightforward. A lot of your limits to a number are just going to be exactly like that. Second one as well, just put in 4 squared minus 3 times 4 minus 2, 16 minus 12 minus 2, and all we've got is 2. So first couple, really, really simple. Let's take a look at the third one. We've got negative 1, so we're going to put in negative, negative 1, plus 3, over negative 1 squared, minus negative 1. Careful with all the negatives here. This is just 1 plus 3, which is 4. Negative 1 squared, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. And we get 2. Fourth example. Put in 3. 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 3 over 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 6. We got 9 minus 12 plus 3. 9 minus 15 plus 6. And we've got 0 over 0. This is indeterminate. So, as with the previous example where we had an indeterminate in the previous video, we're going to try to factor the top and factor the bottom and see if we can remove that hole. It is a hole that causes the 0 over 0 at 3. So here, the numerator is going to factor to y minus 3, y minus 1. The denominator is going to factor to y minus 3, y minus 2. And we are left with the limit as y approaches 3 of y minus 1 over y minus 2. 3 minus 1, 3 minus 2, we've removed the whole, and we've got 2 over 1, or just 2. Let's take a look at number 5. I'm going to change the color here so we can easily see without separating it out. Put in negative 5, 2, negative 5 squared, plus 14, times negative 5, plus 20 over negative 5 plus 5. So we already know we're going to end up with either an indeterminate or an infinity of some sort because the denominator is definitely 0. Numerator here, we've got 50 minus 70 plus 20, and we've got 0 over 0. So let's simplify that. I'm actually going to bring down the sixth example so we have a little bit more room to work. I don't know why that changed to 1, but whatever. So here, we're going to uh, factor the numerator. We're going to take a 2 out and be left with x squared plus 7x plus 10 over x plus 5. And then we're going to factor it further, 2x plus 5, x plus 2 over x plus 5. Divide out the x plus 5s. We're left with just 2 times x plus 2. Now all we have to do is put that negative 5 back in because we've removed the discontinuity. Don't forget about the 2. A lot of people forget about the 2 there because when we factor and solve, we don't have to account for the 2 when it's uh, a quadratic equation. But this isn't an equation. We're filling in values, so the 2 is still a multiple. So now we put in negative 5 plus 2. We've got 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. And finally, this last example, where inexplicably changed to 1. Just because they're trig functions doesn't mean the process changes. So all we're going to do is fill this in. We've got the sine of pi. 
4 times the cosine of 2 pi. Now we should know those values. If you don't, pi is 180 degrees. 2 pi then is 360 degrees. We're dealing in radians here. The sine of 180 degrees is 0. And the cosine of 360 degrees is 1. So all we've got here is 0 over 4, which is just 0. This is not a number divided by 0. This is just 0 divided by a number. 0 divided by anything is just going to continuously yield 0. 